and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uncensored. Club Sunny Sram or the Art of Horror proudly presents this show as part of a local Malaysian industry awakening series, a variety series. We'll be discussing everything with a pinch of horror. Um, if there's no horror content, then please don't blame me. In the meantime, thank you for the, um, watching this. Uh, click the subscribe button over here, or was that not? Um, like the post, like the video, and do share with everybody that you can. Uh, on tonight's show, we have our guest uh, Riza Halim, who is a Malaysian filmmaker who has uh, put his name in the uh, film industry circuit in Australia uh, by directing uh, two Australian movies under Robin Pictures, which is Tainted Getaway and uh, one of one of the other movies, which is uh, something that I would say would be a guilty passion of mine, would be *Lurking Woods*, a slasher flick, uh, with a twist. Uh, please do take a look at that. I put the link below. The links are below. You can actually take a look at that. Let's speak. What? Let's talk about something that I think um, everybody wants to know. What is Club Sinifram or the Art of Horror Club? The Art of Horror Club was established uh, in 2019 as an NGO here in Malaysia and we promote, we assist, uh, we assist to promote, to bring up the horror genre uh, in, in Malaysia and the Asian uh, scene, right? We are an NGO registered under the Malaysian government and a few of the, few of the um, things that we cover is paranormal, uh, parapsychology, films, uh, horror in music, and, and we also have an Instagram page, so please do follow that. I'll put the link below. So, if you have anything to say, and you share any ideas on what kind of content you're looking at when it comes to the horror, uh, horror genre, please do give us a shout out. Give us, give us a message on the inbox, uh, our Instagram inbox. Yeah. Welcome to out of Horror Club, Club Sydney Serum, proudly presents Uncensored, and I'm Vimal Hatcher. Actually, when when uh, when I did Looking Woods, I don't know actually the uh, uh, where Looking Woods will head to. Maybe it's a mainstream, or maybe they want to just like push it to the you know to expand to enter all the film festival. You know, yeah. you know most of the film that if you win various awards in festival, it doesn't mean that you can get you know a lot of collection. True, you true. realize or not? Yes, true. Yeah. 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 It doesn't mean yeah. that you. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you get a lot of awards. Mm. You can enter the mainstream. Uh, uh, you know, mainstream. True. True. Uh, straight away. Yeah. 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 And so, I think most uh, young filmmakers, uh, they have this mm. uh, attitude where receiving uh, awards uh, gives them the uh, uh, empowerment that my movie is better than anybody else's. Young filmmakers have that thought, but what they fail to understand is marketing, hype, uh, uh, making good content. Even though it's the budget is low, making good content mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that entertain. It, I, I'm feeling that is the one that people, the young filmmakers, are not grabbing. They don't have that that set of attention. Um, as pers yeah, I, I'm guess uh, internationally, uh, you do see that uh, countries like Indonesia, uh, they are starting to value more on marketing on making great content yes. so yes. I, I hopefully we can apply this to our country which uh, due to the censorship back in the 70s and 80s we took a step back 
in Malaysian cinema which brings me to my question to you as somebody who has experience in the international circuit what yeah. are your thoughts about the film development council or association here in Malaysia let's start with Finas <laughs> this is a kind of sensitive issue I guess go ahead it's called well, uncensored uh, yeah well, this is my observation, okay? My observation and my, my own opinion. Yes. The thing is, um, they are keep telling people that mm. they want to do quality movies. Yeah. Whereby they don't even know what uh, the quality they're talking about. You know, nowadays, if you watch YouTube, people like, uh, you know, shoot using cellular phone, which is much more better than those people who sh- shot the film with every flex you know True. the thing is the quality itself they don't even know yeah. that it's it's actually it's a it's a, a subjective mm. they don't even look at, about uh, at the storyline they don't even look at at the you know the acting is one part their mentality is still think that those actors with like uh, expensive actors or uh, glamorous actors can sell their movies which is for me it's all totally wrong actually for me is the key point is the story if the story is out everything is out secondly is the short you know yeah. movies if you watch movies actually a movie is something like uh, you watch still photos right if you take a photo for instance if you if you take a photo and you Suddenly, you came across a, a what do you call it, a new scan, and there is a photography uh, magazine. You flip through, and you take a look at the subject point of the photo set. Oh, the the the, the subject is quite something similar to my photo, but then why? It's nicer. It's the shot, right? The shots, the 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 what do you call it, everything. Yeah, then uh. Actually, movie is the same. The only thing is the moving. So in Malaysia, they don't they don't even touch that that area. You know, it's a it's a picture telling story. If you if you have a chance to watch, have you have you have a chance to watch uh, Still Life? Ah uh, yes, I short film, which is yes, which is uh, you know, which is shown in Cannes Film Festival, right? Mm. So um, you know that I'm 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 proud of that short film because because it's those are shots that I'm trying to tell the audience without the dialogues. Yes, I yeah. I, I have ex- I have watched it. Thank you for sending me the link too. I think it was about yeah. two year two years ago that you sent me the link. I love mm-hmm. that the experimental shots that you tried on the movie, and it has been replicated in few other movies. But I think you were one of the first ones to try it. And uh-huh. for a Malaysian uh, director or filmmaker to take that chance and uh, and submit it to Cannes, um, yeah. I think you should you should have been recognized more uh, as, as at least as a mentor to the younger generation. So, yeah, let's just go back to Finas again, right? Yeah. Um, let's go yeah. to up to date uh, events. Hundred million ringgit will be spent oh. uh, will be spent to rejuvenate the industry for our, our permulih package right yeah. so where do you think in your in your point of view right where do you think this money should go which part of the industry should it go i i saw this in the news last night about about this kind of thing you know i i did not apply because i know it wouldn't come to me you know, i wouldn't get it so why i want to waste my time you know sending all the documents and everything and at the end you got frustrated and you uh, end up like don't want to become a filmmaker anymore all right so uh, I saw the news that I uh, came across that few people familiar faces that got the the, 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 the grant yes you know what I mean yep yep so these people actually for me, if if you a film development department, right, or whatever you call it, 
what is your main goal? You want to boost the film industry, right? So why you want to put all the grant, give all the grant to most of the people that already make big movies? You should help those new filmmakers or those are struggling to make a movie. Yeah. And also you have to I don't know, even even the panel also like when you when you go and um, and ask for the grant, they don't even know uh, what kind of story that can really sell. What's the objective of making a movie? You want you want to sell the movie or you just want to no, the Malaysian said shock smiri. Yep. What do you think? Am I right or not? I, I would like to share my thoughts, and, but I think now would not be the right time. Um, one yeah, thing I know that about you yeah. personally is that you are very vocal. Uh, you have appeared in many TV show, uh, many talk shows um, in the mainstream media to to push. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the apni kuto lah. I would say kutuk but in a very productive way make, make people yeah. see things differently uh, you've been doing that for quite some time but the terasa macam your suara tak terdengar if, if your opinions have not been taken seriously but it's, it's not tak didengar it is the one to dengar the one to they dengar like, yeah. uh, yeah. the one to dengar yeah. because but, they think mm. that I'm nobody mm. that's the thing and they they are they don't want to uh, boost my name outside there because they scared that they cannot cari makan. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But for for me, is I I think differently because mm. I want I want you guys to upgrade the standard. You know, no point you send all these people like uh, go to US or whatever upscaling uh, courses which I didn't get. I got rejected from that and at the end those people who came back didn't do anything I'm mm. the one who don't go mm. then I do something which is better than them yep. and you know those days that I'm, I'm myself and my my, 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 my partner uh, my business partner Dato Alias is we are very hard to, to get all those funds to get movie very very hard mm. but at, at the end we are like we managed to pull it off so that we can we can you know we can uh, produce the King Woods and then they get away at that time and we got a lot of kutok you know people are kutok how come with this kind of money you can do international movie all that kind of stuff I I even say F word to them even though they are like Datuk Sri I said Okay, no mind. I'll prove it to you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in our in our video cast here, you can say fuck. No worry about it. Just say fuck. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. It, is, it is uncensored. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, you in face, Australia, yeah. in Australia, we say fuck word uh, many times. Yeah. Almost of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, you have through, gone through a lot. You have struggled a lot in the industry. You have tried to put your name in the map uh, many, many times, and and I believe that moving forward would be the right way to go. So let's look at the next two to three years. Riza Halim, what's on the books right now for you? Okay, actually, I got contacted by by few producers from from the US, from Germany, and even from uh, from Mexico, but. Uh, maybe i'm not that lucky because of the pandemic kind of thing you know so i still hope that everything is over then i can go over there and, and you know do something something for for myself <laughs> actually actually it's, it's wrong actually it's wrong because what i did was okay all this while making international movie is not for myself achieve for all the filmmakers in Malaysia okay I just want those people open up their eyes that not these certain people only can make movie you know I'm the the person who is nobody 
can go beyond them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So please give opportunity to those new filmmakers. Yeah. Right? And also showing them that we need more this kind of like uh, entertaining movie. Mm. People, people love to watch entertaining movie. Okay. Back to Looking Woods. Last time when, when uh, we, uh, I brought the, the thing, myself and Dato Alias brought the, the movie come here mm-hmm. in Malaysia. The filmmakers are, don't like don't like it. Even Pinas don't 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 want to help. The the penapisan uh, censorship they are very helpful. Thank you to censorship. They are very helpful to me. Cinema companies not helping. They don't want to help, especially NBO. Ah, no, especially NBO and GSC. Okay. TV is okay. Okay. Uh, but then I'm quite frustrated because I was like, oh, just because I'm not a Hollywood, uh, it's not a Hollywood film, mm-hmm. but they think that I cannot sell. But you know what? It was shown like one month plus in the in, cinema. In local cinemas. And yeah. yeah, local cinemas. But then why they just give me like 10 cinemas? Because I don't get support get support from these people these people actually who hold you hold you not to go to go out they, they, they don't want to they don't want to explore new things you know what i mean explore yeah. and get uh you know it's, it's hard for me to, <laughs> to to tell you how how to deprecate that yeah. uh the simple thing is that they are more to Hollywood movies mm-hmm. and also the Malay movies that which is have connected with them for Wajit mm. That's the thing. So I'm like I'm in between. I don't I don't get help from 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 Finas or this uh, uh, the, the the cinemas. Mm. But then I proved them wrong. Now they are screaming in the US. Then. We we'll see how it goes. Right, and your experience. Uh, I, yep. Yeah, because I saw it uh, making look. Uh, I mean, looking woods kind of kind of movie or English movie. Mm-hmm. I have I have more bigger market. Yeah. I have more bigger market, and and also. Uh, the reason I went to Australia is to to. Be and challenge myself, mm-hmm. to the extent with other greater filmmakers. Hmm. Don't be a coward. Don't go to third world country and make movie and make yourself a hero. That's very, very wrong. Yes. Okay. Okay. That, that was powerful. <laughs> that was powerful. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, uh, I mean, let's go, let's stick with Lurking Woods for a moment here. If given the opportunity, yeah. the right funding, the right people backing you up, do you see a franchise being built up here? Because um, the closure to Lurking Woods uh, had its message, but do you see a franchise coming? Do you see a sequel uh, on the horizons, maybe with the right backup? Do you think this is something you can do? Oh, uh, okay. Um, I was thinking of making a sequel, but then uh, there's that one time that I have an interview, online interview with, uh, with this uh, US horror critics mm-hmm. which is they love the movie when I, I touch about looking woods and I said like oh I'm most probably I've been doing sequel they are they got excited about it mm-hmm. and uh, I got in touch by one of the uh, actually two or three film company in, in the US trying to get in touch with me and maybe they, they want to I assume that they already watched looking woods and maybe they want to do or collaborate with me. I don't know whether it's Looking Woods or other other projects, I'm not sure. But I love to do sequel for Looking Woods because I know it's, uh, it's going to be a hit. Mm-hmm. Or maybe if Looking Woods uh, not really massively watched in uh, by, by horror fans or maybe it's not widely spread yet, if they watch Looking Woods Part 2, maybe they will look over, try to look over for part one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but uh, if you, if you watch Looking Boots, then you know why I did the 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 endings like that because most probably I was maybe I would do sequel yeah. for the movie. <laughs> yeah, and okay for those who are right now watching um, our uh, our episode here. The links are below. Lurking Woods. If you're in the US, Canada, Australia, please click on it. Um, it's yeah. it's a movie that will definitely give you the ride of your life. Um, let's yeah, yeah. let's bring it back to Malaysia again here. Um, yeah. You have been struggling. You have had difficulties. But um, do you find that the in, in the Malaysian local horror genre here, the industry of horror? What do you think is missing that other countries have that Malaysia doesn't have in the horror genre in Malaysia? But you mean you mean what? Uh, What's missing? Okay, I'll give you an example. Are, the Looking Woods movie. Are countries missing or what? Malaysia is missing. Um, an example here. You have the mainstream horror industry in the, in the US, in the UK, and you have the independent and you have the low budget, right? Low budgets are less than one million uh, USD. In Malaysia, there is no grounds of experimentation for horror movies. There's no middle ground. We have only high budget, and then we have the YouTubers. We don't have an independent horror circuit because independent horror circuit is the best way to experiment, to try new things. Um, that's one thing that's been missing in Malaysia. What, what's your what are your thoughts about creating a horror industry in Malaysia, the independent circuit? Okay, firstly, we need to take a look at uh, the opportunities. Even though you make a good movie, mm-hmm. all right, if those people like Finas or the, the, the cinema company don't give you a chance, then you're out. That's what people, these people don't teach all the film students here in Malaysia. You know, no matter how good is your movie, if you can't get it out there, that's it. Okay. What I experienced is, it's very hard for independent movie to go out there. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the cinemas, actually, they already like, they already target their, 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 their income, the collection. They only target like a uh, Hollywood movie to be out there. Because every month they have like, okay, James Bond is coming out, Top Gun is coming out, you know, they already planned. So, what if you put like my movie in there, they, they say like, oh, this one cannot make movie. Because, you know, the mo- the cinema will take 50% out of it. Mm. So, to them, it's a business. Yeah. But, again, I don't know, what, what I, I see now here, cinemas is controlling finance. Not finance is controlling uh, cinema company. Mm. What, what I can see. You know, yeah. like uh, the cinema is deciding mm. for Finas to give uh, how many cinemas, how many shows, or how many halls to the local. What I can see here, correct if I'm wrong, you know, but whereby actually Finas they should have like full power to tell the cinemas, okay, no matter what, you got to play this movie. Yes or no. Otherwise, we will revoke your, your license. Mm. And also, Finas should be fair as well. Mm. All the, the firm, no matter how big it's, it's the, 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 what do you call it? The budget, it should be, it should be fair. Mm. Like if one movie, like one movie is like they're giving 200 cinemas. Mm. For example, right? Yeah. For example. They should, they should be square to uh, fair to others as well. Two hundred cinemas all the way. Then the filmmaker will will like uh, those who you know gain like seven million or ten million. Then they, they should be proud lah what what they get. Then why why you want to be proud of you getting seven million of collection, whereby you put to all those those people who got five thousand or ten thousand collection. Mm. But the public don't know that those people, the independent, they only be given like 10 cinemas or 5 cinemas or 20 cinemas. How can they make money? Right or not? Yeah. 
for, for me it's not fair at all and another disguise uh, uh, sorry another blessing in disguise uh, since we started the pandemic here in Malaysia is the rise of uh, online platforms VODs mm -hmm. so do you do you see Malaysian cinema evolving and accepting more content from independent filmmakers uh, with such content online actually actually uh, the Malaysian they, they love to watch independent movies uh, if, if you ask me, because I did my survey, mm -hmm. they love to watch, uh, they're beginning to watch independent uh, filmmakers rather than watch this uh, mainstream kind of movie because uh, for them it's kind of lame. Like uh, recycling all those actors, recycling stories. Okay, if I don't know whether you realize or not, if horror movie there'll be a BOMO, there will be a BOMO. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They will be like same hantu. They will be like same, same thing, same, same storyline. If you go to drama, a uh, drama kind of movie, if one person the the lady, or for instance, for example, the 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 lady is coming out from the house, close the door, and people already know, surely kena langgam <laughs> The same yeah. old thing, you know, the yeah. same old thing. Mm. They're doing it mm. without they realize. I don't know. But I don't know whether these filmmakers or directors or producers here do they watch their own movie or they or just watch their own movie, not watching other people other people's work. Mm. That's the question, and they keep on bragging that oh people are watching their movie, uh, their their TV drama or whatsoever, and they don't realize that if they go to the kampung or whatsoever or the the the, the, the houses or whatever. Those housewives, they just on the TV. Yeah. They don't even watch the TV. Yeah. They go to the kitchen, they go to the toilet, they go for prayers, or whatever. They, they, they use the monitor. they use TV for white noise. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so they don't they don't bother about about, about the storyline whatsoever, mm. you know. But but again, uh this the the main thing is the storyline of the of the the, the movie our, our Malaysian movie hmm. yeah yeah okay uh, Rizal let's let's just uh, summarize the whole competition now you have mm -hmm. to gone through a lot in your tenureship as a filmmaker all right you have opportunities coming up in the horizon for you internationally uh, hopefully, and, hopefully. yeah but you will it will happen to you do not worry because there's a lot of diversity happening right now in the Western yeah. cinema yeah. Um, the way things are people uh, where people are looking at content in Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Cambodia. I think there will be a change coming in 2022, 2023. And I, I really hope and pray that you will be in the forefront of Malaysian cinema sooner than later. Uh, yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna give two advice, just two advice to new Malaysian filmmakers, young kids, uh, the TikTok generation, two advice, what will you give them? The TikTok generation? Yeah. <laughs> Because those TikTokers can't, and I don't think so. They can make a, a feature-length movie because they have to venture into it. They have to experiment, yeah. make movies. Yeah. My advice to them: just keep on shoot mm. with your with your cell phone. Now these cell phones are so good, so damn good. You know, you, you can they they even uh, can can shoot uh, up to six. 10k resolution yep. and they can make good movie the only thing is uh, you have to master the the, the shot how, how to shoot it uh, the compositioning of the the what call it the shots mm -hmm. editing and I found some of them actually no it's, it's just not true most of them are good in editing mm. you know yeah in in a in a project in a film, there are three directors actually, mm. three directors. For those who don't know, first is the scriptwriter. Mm. Okay, first is the scriptwriter, those who write the movie, write the whole story. Second is the director on set. Mm -hmm. The director on set can change to be a better story, or make it worse. You know, yeah. that's the second director. 
The third director is the editor. Mm. The editor can manipulate the whole thing. They can he can he can manipulate the script. He can manipulate the the, the shots to make another whole new story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. but then to become a good director, you need to do you need to know everything. You need to know how to write. You need to know to direct. You need to know how to shoot to use the camera so that the cinematographer who think that they are good cannot lie to you on set. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like some of them like, oh, I cannot do this shot. I cannot do this, I cannot do that. If you know the camera, you take the camera and you shoot it yourself. <laughs> Then after that, the editing part. Mm-hmm. You got to know. Because if you know the editing part, If you you still use the film can, you can save the film can. Because you know where to cut actually on set. You don't need to like, like a typical film director. Single, single master, single, single master. Mm. That is a typical that anyone can direct. That's why I said, if uh, anybody wants to say, hey, they want to ask me, hey, I want to become a director. I said everyone can become a director. It's very easy. You just shoot like master, single, single. That was what they did. Even even in TV drama, if you watch in TV drama, you know, oh, in local oh. TV drama, I do. Most of the shots like that. Yeah. Most of the shots like that. Master, single, single, and established shot. Yes. Have Unfortunately, you, you're right. Foreign, have you watched a uh, foreign movie? You watch foreign movie, right? I, I'm sure. Uh. Yeah, definitely. Is there a, is there any establishing shot? Very rarely, but people yeah, are yeah, very rarely. But minimal, but yeah. not not that much. Right? Yes. People already know if you are in the cafe. People already know. Are ah, you in the cafe? Yeah. If they see a, they, they see like a toilet bowl. Ah, they already know it is a toilet. Yeah. So why when you tell people that? Oh, okay. This is a big building. Mm. You know, I'm in the office. <laughs> Yeah. And and also, if you watch TV drama, okay, especially the Malays, how many scenes with uh, at the major makan, dining table, drink, eat, drink, eat. How many? No action. Why? Why must you pay these actors big money? Whereby they just uh, sit there and eat. That kind of scene. All right, good. watch so, YouTube a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watch YouTube. Even they have better shots than that. Better scenes than that. Better okay, to, simpli- to simplify what you just said, to to simplify this, technical knowledge is power. So, kids, technical knowledge, pick it up. Um, you know the whole industry. Yeah. So when you become a director, you will know everything, yeah. uh, and you will know when people bullshitting you. Like DOPs, unfortunately, a lot of them will bullshit. So, but the equipment is good. So. Uh, that's yes. that's quite true. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Inchek Rizal Hadi. Another thing. Yeah, see that. Another thing is, another thing is, mm. think out of the box. Always think out of the box. Yes. Some some of the shots. That's why I say if you learn editing, then you know. Okay. You just shoot whatever. At times that ng shots. Ng is a short term for no good, right? No mm. good shots. At times the no good shots, is the best shots. You never know. Just mm. keep on filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my advice. Nice one. So, with that said, the director of Looking Woods um, available now with the links below. Thank you so much. And everything that's going to go down in the next two years. I just wish you all the best, and hopefully there will be opportunity <laughs> where we can work together. Which I uh, crossing my all my fingers. Um, okay. Mister Riza Halim, thank you for being on Uncensored. And yeah, I want. One more thing, I'm. I would like to apologize because of my English. Because uh, maybe I'm too long in Malaysia. I eat a lot of belacan, so maybe that <laughs> wire already. All right. <laughs> Then I, 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 let, let, let me get deliver you some fish and chips. Maybe uh, the Tata sauce can help a bit. <laughs> right. So thank you very much. And yeah, the director of Lucky Woods, Inchirisa Halim. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me.